So now we're going to talk about sampling distribution and a hypothesis test for a proportion. Uh, we've been working with proportions a lot, especially with the binomial distribution, but we can also do a hypothesis test with a proportion. And so we need to think about how the proportion is distributed. So we're going to call the proportion here our estimated values p hat. And so the mean value is at the center of the distribution, and it has a standard deviation, the square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. Just like we looked at the sampling distribution of the other mean values, like from a z distribution or from a t distribution, we can look at the distribution of a sample proportion and conduct a hypothesis test. And so here we're going to calculate a sample proportion, what we'll call p hat, to estimate p, that population proportion that we're interested in. If our data are independent, we can say the standard deviation is this, p times 1 minus p divided by n, and then we'll take the square root of that. Since we often don't know what p is, we'll often replace it with the sample proportion p hat. And this gives us the standard error of the sample proportion. All we're doing is we're replacing p, because we don't know what p is, we're going to replace p with p hat. And so we're going to use a standard error here in this calculation. Well, just like we talked about with other examples, we want to find out what the right amount to sample is. Uh, we want to choose from a sample size that allows us to make an estimate of the population proportion with some margin of error. And so we're going to denote that margin of error using m. And so m here is going to equal what we'll call z star. And this is a value z from the, t t from the z table. Uh, so our margin of error is going to be z star times the standard error. So we have to guess what p hat is when we choose n. Uh, now we don't always know what this is. So we could use it based on past experience or a pilot study. Maybe we know when we go out and sample trees, we know about 10% of them are always dead. And so in this case, p hat, uh, if we're looking at the proportion of alive trees, p hat might be 90% or 0 0.90. A good way to think, if you have no knowledge of what the p hat is, if you have no idea what that sample proportion is, is just to use 0.5. And this is because the margin of error is the largest when we choose a value p hat of 0.5. And there are some ways you could prove that or visualize that uh, with some simulations. So to determine the appropriate value for n, how many we things we should sample, we can find the proportions. And so then n is going to equal z star divided by our margin of error squared multiplied by p times 1 minus p. And so we can use this formula to calculate the number of samples to collect. Uh, and this is uh, really important as it comes to, uh, particularly for survey design, when we're talking about questions like, do you support issue A? Do you support uh, issue B? Do you not support either of those issues? And so just like how we've done the hypothesis tests with uh, other values, we can calculate a hypothesis test for a proportion. And we're going to go back to the z table for this example. First, we're going to do a simple random sample of size n from a large population. And we have an unknown proportion of p successes. And so we can calculate a z statistic. And again, our hypothesis test can be one-sided to either the greater side or the lesser side, or it can be two-sided. And after finding the z statistic, we can find the p-value if we did it by hand. We could do that manually, or we could use our software to find out what the p-value is, stated against some alternative hypothesis. And so we might say something like uh, p might be some value that we're interested in uh, summarizing with our data, Whereas p sub 0 might be some value we're interested in testing against. So I might want to know, do the majority of Minnesotans support mining? Uh, well, I can do a hypothesis test there. The majority might be set to 0 0.50 or greater than that. And so p sub 0 then could be 0 0.50.
And although the calculation of z is different for the hypothesis test for a proportion, the way that we do the hypothesis test is exactly the same approach that we did for uh, two sample t tests uh, and, and some of the other hypothesis tests that we've done in the past. If we can do a hypothesis test, we can also calculate a confidence interval. And we can do that for proportions as well. And so here, again, we're, we're relying on the fact that we've done a simple random sample of some size n from a large population. Uh, we can find a confidence interval for that proportion. And so it's going to be referenced on p hat, our value that we get, times a value z from the z table times the standard error for that proportion, just like uh, you found and you calculated with other hypothesis tests. And z star is going to be that critical value from the standard normal density curve uh, where there's some value or some area we'll call c between negative z star and z star. And so that z star value is going to be a value you look up on the z table. And some caveats here, use this interval only when the number of successes and failures in the sample are both at least 10. Uh, and so this really kind of relies on uh, some more assumptions about uh, that normal distribution and really that z table where you're getting those values with. So the ultimate thing is that once we have our confidence interval, we can say that, say, 95% of all possible sample proportions of some size from this population will yield intervals that capture the unknown parameter that we're interested in. So we're going to go through an example looking at this proportion test. And we're going to do a hypothesis test. There has been uh, some in, in, the, in the news in Minnesota the last several years um, about the nitrogen fertilizer rule. Uh, and so this was uh, uh, a... Uh, a rule that has been proposed, I think, through legislature. I don't think it's it's gone anywhere as of this recording. But uh, the idea was that getting farmers to limit their use of nitrogen fertilizer as a measure to protect drinking water for Minnesotans. And so we might be interested in doing, and maybe we have some funds to do a survey. So we want to survey Minnesota farmers. Uh, we want to know how much or how many Minnesota farmers should we survey if we want to be 96% confident that our conclusions are accurate to within three percentage points. So we're going to conduct a, a survey and we want to know how many people to sample. And of course, uh, we can use the concepts of a simple random sample to help us with this. And then after that, we're going to say uh, a nonprofit wants to make the claim that the majority of Minnesota farmers, let's say greater than 50% of them, support the nitrogen fertilizer rule. And so now we've got some data. Uh, so a polling company surveyed 35 farmers. In total, 18 of them indicated that they supported the nitrogen fertilizer rule. Uh, and so the instructions here are to carry out a size alpha equals 0 0.10 hypothesis test that examines this claim. And so the instructions and the next uh, series of calculations will conduct a hypothesis test that looks at these examples with the nitrogen fertilizer rule. 